Well, good morning and welcome to today's Lenten devotional as we continue our journey towards the cross. Uh, as, and in that continuation, that journey, uh, today we're going to come back to the story in which Jesus uh, had that perfume uh, poured out upon him. Uh, when I shared it before, I shared it from the Gospel of John this morning. It's going to come from the Gospel of Matthew. And so it, it really would be good to go and read Matthew, Mark, and John. Uh, because they have uh, similar stories but different details, and so they have a different context. And when you read uh, the story in Luke, uh, that's a whole different that's a whole different anointing that occurred. That was a, a woman um, who who was a woman of the night, uh, and and certainly a, a person who would have been considered uh, on the uh, on the fringes of society. Uh, and so Luke has a different a different context with that. But let me um, let me share with you. What uh, Matthew says, and then we'll speak about that for just a second. It says, um, and I'm, I'm at uh, Matthew 26, I'll be going to read verses 1 through 13. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, this is Jesus is, uh, is about to conclude all of his teachings, and he's moving into the final uh, phases of his life uh, in preparation for the Passover and for the crucifixion. He said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace uh, of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. And there's a lot just in those verses to, to reflect on and think about. Jesus already knew he was going to be crucified, but we have a we have another view or another perspective in which the, the high priest and the religious leaders are coming together and they're scheming. They're trying to figure out uh, how they can arrest Jesus. But Jesus already knows uh, that, that he will be arrested. Uh, so here we are. While Jesus was in Bethany uh, in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. And there's a, there's a difference there. In, in John, we have the, the, the perfume being poured on Jesus' feet. In Matthew, we have the perfume being, uh, being uh, poured on Jesus' head. And, and that could be uh, an allusion to uh, this, um, this woman recognizing uh, Jesus as the Messiah and so anointing him uh, in that process. Uh, but we're going to discover that there's actually Matthew actually tells us what this is about. Uh, when the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Um, and you'll remember in John, uh, the person who became indignant was Judas. But here we have all of the disciples uh, that have this outcry. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? And again, I, I want you to just catch note that the woman is not named in this story. Uh, we don't know if she was already in the room. We don't know if she walked in or any of that. Now in John, we get the, the picture that the woman, the name of the woman is Mary. And so it may be that Matthew is just wanting to, uh, to show the, the importance of women in general uh, in this context. But, but what we know is that women com uh, Jesus comes to the defense of this woman. The poor you will always have with me, but you will not always have me. Uh, she did it to prepare me for burial. So Jesus saw that this anointing was not for, to mark him as the Messiah, but the marking of him in preparation for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of me. And so Matthew, like John, has elevated this story uh, and, and, and it's a story that we continue to remember today. And, and, and the point that Matthew's making that John made was this woman, whether, uh, you know, uh, we're going to believe uh, that it was Mary, uh, she's just not named in Matthew, uh, that this woman uh, aligned herself with uh, Jesus' purpose and mission, which was to come and suffer and die at the hands of man, become uh, the curse of, uh, it says, "Cursed be he who hangs on a tree." Jesus became the curse, so that we might see the full depth, the full capacity of the Father's love for us. Uh, that she, um, in that alignment, 
uh, made, made the statement, you know, uh, the disciples have argued with Jesus. Why do you have to go to Jerusalem? They've tried to keep Jesus from, from facing this, this uh, certain death. But she aligns and says, no, this is his mission. This is his purpose. This is why he's here. You know, the disciples had argued amongst themselves about who would be the greatest. And James and John had talked about if they could sit at, their seat, at the left and the right hand. But this woman doesn't do any of that. Uh, all she does is she prepares Jesus uh, for, for burial. She knows that he's going to die. Uh, and uh, in that effort, uh, what Matthew is, is uh, saying to us as Christians Right, because this is this the, the Gospel of Matthew is written well after uh, Jesus's uh, crucifixion, well after his resurrection, and well after his ascension. He is saying we as Christians uh, need to embrace that Jesus died, that he was buried, and that he was resurrected. Uh, but we also have to embrace, align ourselves with the mission and the purpose of Jesus, was so that all. All of humanity would see the full depth of the Father's love for humanity. That, we, that all of humanity would see how far God was willing to go, even to humble himself to the point of being a servant who would suffer and die at the hands of the very, the, uh, at the hands of the very humanity that was created by God in order to prove the full depth of his love. And so this morning, I invite you to think about what, what, um, what acts or uh, what aspects of Jesus' extravagant love um, do you think is a waste? The disciples, the, the disciples complained. You know, this, this could have been used in a different way. What aspects of Jesus' love do you think uh, is a waste? Uh, ask a, a, another way or uh, another question for you to reflect on. Are there some people that you believe it's just a complete waste of your time to love unconditionally? I invite you to think about those two uh, and, and ask yourself, am I willing to put myself in alignment uh, it, with, with Jesus' mission and purpose that to go even to the point of death in order to prove the Father's love for all of creation? Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we are humbled by your act and your example of love for us. Um, your word teaches us no greater love does one have than to lay down one's life for his friends. Jesus, you not only lay down your life for your friends, but you also lay down your life for your enemies. And because of that, we have life. We have freedom. We have the confidence of knowing that we are loved unconditionally by you. It is what causes us to look up at the stars in the sky and say, out of all of your creation, out of everything that you have created, who am I that you are so mindful of me? May, it, may that inform us and inspire us to be a people who walk with humility and obedience today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, my friends, thanks for being with me again this morning. I pray God's blessings upon you for the rest of your day, and I'll look forward to the next time that we're together. Until then, be good.